right now. Let's give a big, warm welcome and uh, open your heart real big to Reverend Ricky Edwards. Praise God. Amen. Well, look at somebody say, you're so precious. Jesus died for you. Amen. Praise God. Aren't you glad Jesus loves us? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, thank you so much. You may be seated. Praise God. I want to honor the pastors because we know in the local church there is no higher office than the office of a shepherd. Amen. And we understand, you know, in Ephesians chapter 4 it talks about the fivefold ministry, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. And we know they're all here. We know they're still here. They're still active in the body of Christ. But we know in the local church that the shepherd is the highest office. And uh, the reason of it is, is the shepherd's going to look after the flock. Amen. And he's going to live there. He's going to take care of the sheep. Now the apostle, prophet, evangelist, and teacher. Now pastor can, can do evangelistic work. Paul told Timothy to. He can do also, he, he can be a teacher or a preacher. But we know that they're mainly out in the field and they travel around from church to church. But thank God for the office of a shepherd. Amen. I tell you, they love the sheep. They take care of the sheep. They feed the sheep. As Brother John Olstein used to talk about, glory to God. And so we are just so thankful for the office of a shepherd. Amen. Would you guys please stand? We want to honor you. We thank God for you. We thank God for that office. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I tell you what. And, and you know, we're, we're glad that here we're taught right. We know we don't hero worship a man or a woman, but how many know we recognize the office of God on a man or a woman? Amen. Amen. And when we recognize that office on a man or woman, then how many know according to Matthew 10, 40 and 41, we're able to receive from that office and we get the benefit of that office. Amen. Glory to God forevermore. Well, we're just so honored and blessed to be able to be here. As Pastor said, uh, we've been acquainted for a couple of years now. We... We are just so thrilled to be a part of what Jesus Christ is doing in the earth today. And uh, in that, how many of you know that the thing that of it is in Acts 17, it talks about when God said you'd be alive, what group of people you'd be born to, and your boundaries would be. And you know, God loved you and trusted you so much that you are alive on earth very close to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So I mean, no, you are the elite group. Amen. I said you are the elite group. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So in that, we're just so thrilled to be here and be a part of this. We love your facility. And how many know, as Pastor said, we're not going to be here forever. Not here in this building. How many know we got our sights on other stuff? Hallelujah. And we're going to get there, right? Amen. Praise God. And as they were talking about, how many know, through the body of Christ, we'll do our part. As Pastor Joni talked about, how many know, we're going to do our part, and then God will do what we can. Amen. He'll do His part. Amen. Glory to God. Well, this morning, in preparing for the, the service here, you know, I always like a, a timely word. It, it's always fresh. It's new. Uh, I, I like croutons, but I only like them on a salad. Amen. I don't like them at church and I don't like them in a message. Amen. I like for it to be fresh manna, something fresh, something you can sink your teeth into. Amen. I don't like to see the saints crunching. <laughs> Amen. So in praying and preparing about the message, the Lord began to talk to me about some things and, and I, I don't know, I, I always usually know where at least I'm going to start. I have no idea where I'll end up, but it'll be a good place. Amen. If we follow the Holy Ghost, and we're going to do that. Amen. So if you have your Bibles this morning, I'd like for you to open them up, if you would, please. Ecclesiastics, chapter 7, verse 8. And uh, we're, we're going to take just a few minutes here. One of the things, uh, Dr. Dufresne and I, we were together uh, in a meeting together in uh, the week after Thanksgiving in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. And uh, we were preaching there, and, and he'd preach a, a night, and I'd preach a night. He'd preach a night, and I'd preach a night. And he, you know, I get around, I call him mom and dad, uh, Dr. Frame, Pastor Nancy. And I get around them, and they, you know, the Spirit of God in them, and, and the things that God's revealing to them, it always sparks something, stirs something up. How many know every time you come to church, you ought to be ready to hear something that's going to change your life forever? Because your pastor's been praying, and he's got something that's going to feed you. Amen. Well, and we were around him, and Dad began to preach about some things out of Matthew 24. 
and it really stirred some things in my heart. And, and as we got to digging around in that, and then some things that Brother Hagin had preached uh, in years gone by, but how many know if it's of the Word, it's eternal? And so in that, uh, God began to do some things, talk to us about some things. So this morning in preparing, last night and, uh, and uh, the day before, thinking about these meetings, thinking about, Lord, what do you want us to talk? What do you want us to tell from the Scripture? Because how many of you know, like I said, we want it to be fresh, we want it to be applicable. Amen. He began to talk to us about some things about in the world, we know that, that things are crazy right now in the world. Now, I mean, no, we live here, but we don't operate like everybody else. Amen. Glory to God. And in that, we know there's, there's trouble here, there's, there's just turmoil here, there's all these things going on. But how many of you are glad for a believer... We can be, the, one of the things that I love so years ago, you remember where it talks about in Psalms? It says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and then you'll prosper. Yeah. Well, that word peace, as Brother Copeland and Sister Billy brought out years ago, meaning shalom, meaning nothing broken, nothing missing. That word peace. Peace does never mean here in the scripture where I'm referring to, never means absence of trouble. But it means in the midst of trouble, you can still have the peace of God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So with everything going on, how many of you know the church ought to be the happiest, peaceful, settled down bunch? Glory to God. Because how many know everybody else that's out there that doesn't have a covenant, they ought to see how we're living and they want to know the Jesus we're running with. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So this morning here in Ecclesiastics, chapter 7, verse 8, we'll pray and then we'll read. Father, this morning we love and thank you and praise you. We thank you so very much for the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Ghost, whom we're born, baptized, led, and taught by. Holy Ghost, we thank you to bring forth light, illumination from the Word of God. We thank you, Father, that we understand as we walk in the light, as Jesus is in the light, in the revelation of the Word, that we thank you that we qualify to walk in a greater life. We thank you, Father, for the light of the Word we have received as we walk in it. We thank you for greater light, and that causes greater victory. Glory to God. So we thank you this morning as we come to the Word. We thank you for the things that we do know. We thank you for the things we have seen. We're walking in that, but we thank you today is a day of increase. Glory to God. We thank you we are going from glory to glory. We are being increased and increased and increased. Glory to God. We thank you from where you have brought us from, but we thank you that we're not at our finished place yet. Glory to God. We thank you for the wonderful increase in our life, but we thank you one of your names is El Shaddai, the God of more than enough. Glory to God. So we thank you we are increasing in you, Father, and we give you all praise, all glory, and all honor for it. In Jesus' name, and everybody agreed, said amen. In Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 8, it says, Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof, and the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. One thing that I, I like, this one translation, it says, Endings are always better than beginnings. Another one is this, Sticking to it is better than standing out. Amen. Glory to God. The end of a thing is better than the beginning. Now when we start things, when we start with our walk with Jesus, how many know it's fresh, it's new, it's exciting, and, and I mean away we go, glory to God. But how many of you like me have found out after you've served God for a while that it's, it's kind of like, the, if I could say it this way, the honeymoon stage kind of gets over and all of a sudden, the enemy, the devil, wants to begin to come and start stirring some stuff up. And then he'll turn around and say, well, if God loved you, he wouldn't let this go on. But how many of you know, for a believer walking with God, our walk ought to get hotter, ought to get better, and ought to get stronger. Glory to God. It's very easy to start something, but how many know, we're of the group that's going to finish some stuff. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How many of you are glad God raised up this church to affect this whole area of Houston and in other parts of the world? 
It began many years ago, but how many know it's going to finish its course? Amen. Well, in that, how many know you're going to finish your course? So here, <coughs> excuse me, in the book of Ecclesiastics, it says better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Look at somebody say, I'm going to finish my course. Then if you would, drop back to the book of Job. Job chapter 8, of course you could probably quote it. We'll, we'll go look at it. Job chapter 8, verse 7. When you get there, if you would, say amen. Alright, Job 8, 7. He says, though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end should greatly increase. Look at somebody say, I'm full of increase. I'm full of increase. Though thy beginning was small, I like this, never despise the days of small beginnings because if you don't despise them, they won't stay small. Amen? But one thing that I've noticed, and I'm still a young man, but one thing I've noticed in the, the few years we've served God, the 20-some, is that in that, it takes progression and it takes time to get to places. Right? Now, it doesn't take a long time to get saved. You ask Jesus into your heart, bam! How many know you're instantly born again? But it's a lifetime of learning what's available to us and the things that we have available to us in Jesus. Amen? But in that, he said here, Though thy beginnings were small, yet thy latter end should greatly increase. Everybody, if you don't mind, say increase, please. Then if you would, go to the third John, back by the book of Revelation. Third John 2, please. You know this scripture again, but we'll go look at it. Third John 2, please. Beloved, third John 2, beloved, I wish above all things that thou what? Prosper. And what else? Be in health. How? As thy soul prosper. Now, we know prosper or prosperity sometimes, as Pastor was talking about all ago, he's talking about being a healthy Christian. Well, how many of you know, prosperity is not just money. It's such a very small part of prosperity, but yet it is a part of prosperity. But prosperity means increase. How many know, if I'm prospering in God, my marriage is going to look better than it used to? If I'm prospering in God, my ministry that God's called me to is going to continually increase and grow. If I'm prospering, how many know I'm going to walk in a greater degree of health than I ever have before? Are you with me? So we understand about prosperity. So he said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou prosper, or may I say increase, to the same degree your soul is prospering. Right? So we know then as the pastors teach us the Word, and in, in our daily devotion and times when we study the Word for ourselves, or we look up things they've taught us from last week, how many of you know, as we look at that, there is a continual progression or a growing. Amen. Right? Yeah. So in that, everybody say, God is in, in, is in increase. God is in increase. Now, if you would please, go to Revelation chapter 3. In Revelation chapter 3, <coughs> excuse me, let's look here at about verse 7. So we saw in Ecclesiastics the ending is better than the beginning, right? And then we saw in Job 8 that our end shall be greatly increased. 3 John 2, God wants us to prosper, right? God wants us to increase. Now in Revelation 3, 7, it says, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write these sayings, saith, He that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. Verse 8. I know thy works, behold, I have set before thee, tell me what did he set before him? Thank you. An open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and has kept my word, and has not denied my name. Years ago, I, I shared with the pastors, I grew up in, in a, a denomination church, 
uh, in the uh, assemblies of God. Still minister in the assemblies. And so, I, you know, I, I don't want anybody to think I'm, I'm attacking them because I still minister and I have a family that pastor Assembly of God churches. So I love them. And I thank God for the Pentecostal background that was put into me from that group. But in that, and how many know we're all in the same family if you're born again? Amen. So, so we're not attacking them. But in that group, as I grew up, there were some things that I was taught, and, and I had a Bible. I could have studied it, but I, I, I didn't want to study much back then. I, I just I thought I was saved and secure, and that was good. Now I have a hunger to really find out some stuff. Amen. Amen. But in that, uh, there were some things that I was taught, and, and I, I maybe added some things to it, that in the open door was basically, God, if you want me to do something, then open this door. And God, if you don't want me to do it, then close that door. And we would use this Bible reference here. That God would open a door, no man could shut. Shut a door, no man could open. But then later, you all know, you know, the, the ones, all the availability of the revelation, the books now, about how to be led by the Holy Ghost. Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, that group qualifies as sons of God. Right? Amen. So we know that God put His Holy Spirit inside of each one of us that are born again. One of the jobs of the Holy Ghost is to lead you, teach you, guide you, comfort you, and all of the other, strengthen you. That is His assignment. Amen? So in that, so I used to pray, God, if you want me to, to take this job or you want me to buy this car... Then, then let my credit go through. Come on. Come on. Or, or Lord, if you want me to take this job, then let them hire me. Come on. And I mean, no, you can get hoodwinked doing stuff like that. Amen. Because, you know, it could be a plot of the devil to get you in a car payment that really you can't do. Are you with me? But when we say God, I have somebody in me. Now, I don't know everything, but I got somebody in me that knows everything. And I ask you, <coughs> excuse me, to lead me, guide me by the inward witness on the inside of me. How many know? Then I'm led by the inward witness. Because how many know? The devil is out here. And if we ask open and closed doors to be our leading, he can move some stuff. But since the Holy Ghost lives on the inside of you, how many know there can't no devil get on the inside of you, glory to God. And when you ask God to lead you, guide you by the inward witness on the inside, how many know can't no devil get in there and mess with it, glory to God. <laughs> so, yeah, look at somebody say, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Tell somebody, he lives big on the inside of me. Glory to God. So when we say, okay, Lord, I, I thank you. I'll follow my peace. I'll follow the witness. And then how many know, if the Holy Ghost says, okay, buy that. How many know, buy it. If the Holy Ghost says, buy that house. And, and yet it's probably, it could be a house maybe bigger than you were looking at or whatever. How many know, if the Holy Ghost said, Get it. How many know the payment's already made? <laughs> Glory to God. If the Holy Ghost says, build that building, how many know hey, we're following His leading? <laughs> Glory to God. We got a supply. <laughs> Glory to God. It's going to come. Glory to God. So everybody say increase. increase. So in the increase, does God want you to increase? Does God want you to cut back? What's he want? Increase. Increase. Now, if the Holy Ghost said, shave this off right now, how many know that's not a cutback, that's a leading? It's not a decrease, that's an increase. So here, in Revelation, he says, (laughs) I know thy works. Is it okay if I take off my jacket and I don't preach myself got hot? Amen. Glory. Thank you, sir. Now, Glory, it could be 45 in there and I could be sweating. The anointing gets to rolling, it gets hot. All right, now, so he says here, I know thy works, 
Behold, I have set before thee an open door. Everybody say an open door. open door. So we know then that this open and closing of the door by God, by Jesus, because in my Bible, these verses are read. How about you? So what's that mean to us? Jesus said it. Jesus said it. Oh, okay. But anyway, now, remember that song? But anyhow, now, here Jesus said he'd open a door no man could shut and shut a door no man could open. But yet, since Jesus and the Word are one and the Holy Ghost is in agreement, then how many know Jesus would not contradict what Paul wrote in Romans 8 by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, that a leading can't come for a believer through open and closed doors, but it comes by the inward witness. But yet the open and closed doors are there, so it's got to have some revelation that we've got to look at. So here, now he says this. Now, how many know Romans 8, 14? You know that, right? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, right? So everybody say, number one way I'm going to be led is by the inward witness. Okay. Now, let's read Revelation 3, 8 again. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee, what? An open door. Who said that? Jesus. And no man can shut it. Now, if you would, go with me to Matthew chapter 25, please. We're going to come back to Revelation, but it'll be a little bit before we get back. Matthew 25, please. Let's look here. At about verse 21, Matthew 25, 21, please. Say glory when you get there. Glory. His Lord said unto him, well done. Aren't you glad when we stand before Jesus, we want to hear, well done, not well. Hey, man, glory to God. We want to hear well done, right? All right, so his Lord said unto him, well done, thou good, and what? Faithful servant, thou hast been what? Faithful. Faithful over what? I will make thee ruler over what? Many things. Many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. May I ask you a question? What brought increase into this man's life? Thank you, thank you. His faithfulness. His faithfulness and his obedience. Is that right? How many know God wants you and I to increase? Now in that, would you agree with me, according to this Bible verse, what brought increase into this man's life was his faithfulness. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, Paul says to, to young Timothy, Timothy records it, he says, the things that thou hast learned, heard, and seen in me, Teach thou also to what kind of men? Thank you. Faithful men that they also may teach others. Look at somebody say, I'm glad I'm set by somebody that's faithful. Amen. Now, two definitions for the word faithful are these. These are, it's not all, just two. Faithful is to be trusted or reliable. To be trusted or reliable. Now this is what I wrote down. I want to read this to you and then we'll go back to Revelation 3.8. It seems as Christians are faithful to do whatever God's asked them to do, then increase will come and God will open doors of opportunity because they have been found faithful. Now in that, see, years ago I was taught, uh, now how many of y'all do believe in prosperity? I'm talking about every aspect of life. Okay, I do too. In that, we know, this is what I was taught, this was way back, back way back. I was taught that if you didn't prosper, it must have been because God couldn't trust you or it would hurt you in some way. Now, we all know that's not correct. But I was taught that. But, listen to me. There are some things that Jesus brings out 
as one progresses in faithfulness and obedience, it brings increase. Right? So look at somebody say, I am glad I'm set by somebody faithful. Amen? Now, I mean, no, this is not a works thing. This is just following the plan of God. Right? Now, so here he says to this man with the talent, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a what? Few things. What's he going to do now? Make him rule over many. How many know increase is coming to the man? Look at somebody say, I've been found faithful. So what's going to happen to you? Going to be increased. How many know your realm of influence, if you've ever studied what God said to Abraham in Genesis, one of the things when he said, there's four things he told him, but one of them was, I'll make your name great. His realm of influence would expand. How many know we are, there is a voice. Are we in south or, or west? West Houston. How many know there is a voice in West Houston? It is called Houston Faith Church. Glory to God. But how many know it is affecting this area? How many know though it's going to get bigger? Amen. And as you walk with God, how many know your voice of influence, your realm, it will increase. Glory to God. How come it is when a Christian gets on a job and they're faithful, they do what's right, they show up, they do what the boss wants. How I many of the boss begins to look at him and say, you're the next one I'm looking at for a management position. Why is it? Because we got the favor of God on us, glory to God. And they just can't help themselves because we look good. Right? I'm talking about with God on us. My wife calls it the fog. The favor of God. We walk in the fog all the time, glory to God. Everywhere we go, we get the fog. Amen. Why? Because God just loves us. Glory to God. So here, the door of opportunities comes not for leading, but because one's been found faithful. So God will open doors of opportunities as one has been found faithful. So often, you remember, you remember uh, Psalm, Psalm 75. You want to go over it real quick? I think it's Psalm 75. I'm pretty sure it is. Somewhere in that area if it ain't. Psalm 75, verse 6. Say glory when you get there. Glory. For promotion cometh neither from the east nor from the west, nor from the south. But yet Isaiah 14 says, when the devil's trying to overthrow the kingdom of God, he talks about, I'm talking about in heaven, remember he said, I will exalt my throne above the stars in the north, yeah. the throne in the north. Yeah. How many know God's throne sets in the north? So according to this, it says promotion doesn't come if that's east, from the east, if that's west, west, or south. Well, where does it come from? Where God's at. How many of you know God puts one up? God sets you up. Amen? So here, when he begins to talk about this, the door of opportunities is not for leadings, but it is for opportunity of increase. Because one's been found faithful. That's why sometimes people are like, Pastor, how come, you know, and I'm just going to pull a name. If it's this your name, I don't know it. But, you know, how come, Pastor, you, you, and, uh, uh, you guys are always pulling up Sister, uh, let's just say Pamela, or Brother Bobby. And, and in that, sometimes people think that because... They like them. They do that. But how many of you know promotion comes from the north? And since they're pastors, God will talk to them about the leadership of this group of folk. 
and he'll put something on their heart about somebody, and the reason of it is probably that person's been found faithful, and God starts talking to the leadership about them, glory to God, and says, I tell you what, I'd like for you to promote them. Because they have been found faithful, and God will open a door that no man can open. Amen. Sometimes we'll try to push through some doors, kick through some doors, and you can get through it, but you'll break a sweat doing it. But if you'll let God open the door for you, when you get to walk through that door, you get to stay over on the other side of that door because God opened the door. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. But you see, these are things that we can find in the Word of God. It takes years to get stuff out of us and get stuff in us. You know, I, I, re I remember when me and my wife, we, we pastored in Silsby, Texas. Started a church in, in uh, 88, 1988, over by Beaumont. And uh, we started, uh, there was my wife, me, and our children. We had five at the time. And uh, sometimes there were other people that came. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. And I learned when it was just me, my wife, and the kids. They're all on the front row. That I learned then, it really, that scripture means so much more. The more you give, the more you'll receive. Because I we were the only ones giving in the offering. So if we give more in the church offering, we're going to get more. <laughs> <laughs> amen there were no others there tied in amen so but you know what there was some stuff I taught back then it's all the light I had but dear God it'd be dangerous to a very big group today amen are you with me some of the stuff we taught some of the stuff we taught we, our hearts were right but how many of you know as you grow and as you progress how many know People's lives are so precious. They are valuable, glory to God. And God doesn't want to lose nobody. Amen, glory to God. So God will, He'll watch you. And as we grow and we mature, how many of you are more mature now than you used to be? How many of y'all used to be a little rough around the edges? You know, I can relate to Peter. He said, we're lively stones. And we just need to get around some folk that will help us knock the edge off. Because sometimes we're a little jagged. You know, we're bumping into people. Excuse me. Amen. With our thoughts and everything else. But we keep rubbing shoulders up against them. And pretty soon, we slick as a lizard. Amen. Glory to God. And we're able to hang out with other folk. We don't hurt nobody because we spent some time together. So Peter said, we're lively stones. We ain't a dead rock. We're lively stones. But in that, there were things that we'd tell and do. Oh, Jesus. You know, I, I remember I was preaching one time, and uh, I wasn't at our, our church. I'd been invited to a camp meeting up at Kirbyville. I was up there. And there was a person a few rows back. And, and I was still, you know, I was young in the Lord. I'd just come in. I used to to be alcoholic and stuff, and well, I was a drunk. I didn't tend AA. I just drank every day. But in the drugs and the jail and all that. So I hadn't been saved that long. Come back into fellowship, went to Raymond. God said, start a church. I'm like, Lord, this is a pretty fast crash course here. But we're working with my wife. Thank God for her. We're at this camp meeting. I'm preaching a few rows back. There's this guy. He's sitting there, and he's mean mugging me as I'm preaching. And I don't know whether he's thinking or if he's wanting to fight. And the longer I go, the matter I get. Finally, I'm like, what? What? Well, I mean, <laughs> so, I mean, we've grown past that a little bit. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. So, as we grow, God will keep opening. See, some of you all like, oh, I, ooh, I want it. Mm, you ain't quite there yet. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But you stay with it. Amen. Because, you know, used to, somebody slap me, pow, before you think about it. Are you with me? But we're grown past it, I think. But, you know, <laughs> we're growing. But this is a lifetime. Don't, don't be in such a rush. 
that you don't enjoy the trip. Enjoy the ride. Have fun doing it. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We were in Silsby. This is a true story. Uh, I had a, a, some deacons. And uh, the, we, we were doing live. This was back about 90, 91. Radio program. Well, you know, they didn't have all the technology they did in. So they had a little box. And we had to put a, a telephone plug in in the sound booth. And they'd plug it. We'd call the radio station, get them online, swap that out, plug it in the phone line, and our PA system go through it. And we'd preach live to a radio station several miles away. And so one deacon, he come by, and we had a tall wall kind of like that. And he was, he was a shorter man. He couldn't reach over to the phone, so he pulls a chair up to beside the sound booth, steps up in it, gets the phones dialing, and the sound man sees him. He goes charging over there, runs up in the sound booth, and takes that phone away from that guy, and he says, you are not allowed to use this phone. <laughs> so I got two deacons that are swinging at each other, and I'm going to preach in about five minutes. Both of them loved Jesus. Both of them loved God. But they were not quite ready for public use yet. <laughs> the one that was in the PA system, he was rough as a cob. I mean, he was rough around the edges. And he carried a knife. I don't think he had a gun, but, but uh, he, would, he would do the offering bucket and he would put it down like this and he'd, he'd watch what they put in. If it wasn't enough, he'd stand there and go. I'm like, okay, we're going to have to have some teaching on how to receive an offering. We're not going to shake folk down. Amen. So in that, we have to understand that... God knows where we are. And as we're going with Him, let God open these doors. So when you go through, you don't hurt people that's already in this next room. <laughs> but you're... You're like, oh, love you, man. I'm, I'm really glad to be in here, you know. It's not like, don't, don't ever touch me again, amen. But it's love, it's consistent. And as we get through that door, how many know, then you stay faithful. You stay hooked up with the pastors. You stay committed to your place in this body. You stay faithful to whatever God's called you to. And how many know, you will get through that room and then there'll be another door. You'll go through that one. You stay with You say, yeah, but Brother Ricky, this might take years. What else we got to do other than obey God? Amen. Amen. My dad always told me, he said, Ricky, you'll not start on the top rung of the ladder. He said, I know you'll try to kangaroo up there. But he said, usually, it's the bottom step, the next step, the third step, the fourth step, and every time, and before long, you will be to the top. But how I many know it will take a lifetime? The thing of it is, is God wants to use you in such a way. There are people you will see on the job and stores and hair salons other places, golf courses, shooting ranges, wherever you go. There are people that you will see that I will never meet. Yeah. Yeah. And you will have an opportunity to share the love of God, to talk to them about their eternal soul, where they're going to be. And as we do that, how many know, I love what Brother Hagin said. Many of the books that he wrote and the things that he shared with us, it started one on one. And the meetings that he would conduct, there would be 50, 60 people, then 100, maybe 200. And it ended up being many more. But it took a lifetime. The open door that 
God wants to open for you? God knows where we are. He has your interest at heart. Amen? Now, let's finish this up. In Revelation chapter 3, let's go back there. Glory to God. Revelation chapter 3. How many know God, my, my little kids, they're all grown, have children now, but when they were small, they used to sing that song. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Amen. The sun, the moon, and stars took him just a little while, but he's still working on me. Amen. How many of you know Philippians 1, 6 says, He which hath begun a good work in you, he will complete it. He will complete it. Just stay with him. Let him work with you. And how many of you know, you might be rough around the edges now, but you stay with God. Let him work with you. Amen. And you know, if pastor says, you know, I'd, I'd really like for you to, to do uh, this particular job, and you'd say, well, you know, pastor, I appreciate that, but I'd really like to be up in front of people right now. How many know, the pastor maybe knows that you got jagged edges on him. Don't you get offended at the man that God has put over you to love you, feed you, and take care of you. Respect that office. He knows. How many know? They love you. They love you with all of their heart. That's weak as branch water, y'all. I said they love you with all of their heart. They don't want you to fail. They don't want you to be hurt and leave. They want you to be a success in the kingdom of God. Amen? All right, now, hallelujah. I don't know what I'm doing on all that, but I hope it's all right. Praise God. All right, Revelation 3 8. He says, I know thy works, behold, I've set before thee an open door, no man can shut it. Now, I may mean, know if God opens a door for you, can the devil shut it? No. Can another man shut it? See, as you've been found faithful, God will begin to open doors. All of a sudden, other people will be like, how come, how come that opportunity's come to them? You can say, because I'm faithful. Not because I'm so wonderful. Are you following me? But see, as we're faithful, how many know God's taking notes? Now, in this, in my Bible, Revelation 3a, in the margin. I have a, another scripture reference, and it's 1 Corinthians 16, 9. I don't know if you have that or not. But it says, I will open a door no man can shut, shut a door no man can open. In the margin of my Bible, for that verse, Revelation 3, 8, it has reference to 1 Corinthians 16, 9. Does anybody else have that reference scripture? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Let's go there, 1 Corinthians 16, 9. 1 Corinthians 16, 9. When you get over there, if you would, say amen, please. All right, y'all are the fastest Bible thumpers in southeast Texas. Amen. South Texas, where we are. All right, now, 1 Corinthians 16, 9. Paul writes and he says, For a great door and effectual is opened unto me. So who opened the door? God did, didn't he? According to Revelation 3, 8, Jesus said, I will open a door no man can shut. Shut doors no man can open. Right? And we saw Matthew 25 that Jesus said, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many. What brought the increase? So here Paul says, now this is what I want you to please catch. I, I talked to Dr. Dufresne about this and Pastor Nancy and, and others uh, over, it's been, well actually Dr. Dufresne will be at our, our place tomorrow in Oklahoma. It was last year in February, was I was on the front row, he walked by me and he slapped me. You know, in a kind way. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> Amen. 
because I hit people like that. So if I sow it, I get to reap it. Amen. You know, when I'm under the unction, I'm talking about. Amen. And so he walked by and he, and he said, the reason you're going through the hell you're going through is because there's an open door. You've stepped through it. And the adversary's doing his best to get you to back out. So that beget set me on a course. This was from February last year. There were things going on. Me and my wife, we, we've never really fought. We never have. We are in our 32nd year of, an, of marriage, 32 years. And this year in December will be 33. But we've never really fought. And, and at the house, she's pastor at the church in Oklahoma. So when she's in the pulpit, she's my pastor. But at the house, I'm senior heffy. <laughs> 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 But uh, we never really fought in that way. But there was stuff with our children, businesses, thing, and stuff going on in my body. I, I walk in divine hell. I walk in it. I don't have no problems. Uh, we have to do a, a physical for, for real estate stuff and insurance periodically. And the doc writes on there, one healthy individual. Amen. And so, how I many know that's because of the goodness of the Word and Jesus? But there was stuff going on. You know, you'd get up and there'd be trouble and, in your body and, and stuff going on. And always, usually, the first thought that comes is not, this is an attack of the devil. No. Usually it's, I wonder what you've been doing. See, in Luke 13, when the woman had the bad back, was bowed over, couldn't no wise lift up herself, Jesus came along. Everybody else that dealt with that woman must have dealt with a bad back. You know, they didn't have the revelation like we have now, like disc and vertebrae and all that, but they just had a bad back. So everybody that dealt with that woman dealt with a bad back. That's immediately when they dealt. But Jesus comes along and immediately Jesus says, it's not physical, it's spiritual. He's the only one that tagged that. Now here's what's interesting. The devil, when people said this lady, you know, I'll use pastor here, but as an example, when they talked about that lady in Luke 13, when they come up to her, they're like, oh, sister, just bless your heart, you got a bad back. The devil never jumped up and hollered, no, no, it's not a bad back, it's me. Woohoo! It's me. See, he is content to fly under radar and let you think it's the economy, it's your job, it's your family, it's you, when really it's him. And he wants the advantage more than he wants the recognition. So as you're faithful and you're walking with God, you show up at church, you're helping your pastors, you're excited, glory to God, you're standing at the back door, visitor come in, we're so glad to have you today, pastor's been praying, studying, he got a word from heaven today, glory to God, we got children's church, one of the best ones, we got another, and then people are like, wow, okay. <laughs> and you've been serving that way all along, but then all of a sudden, it's like hell starts breaking out around you. The devil come along like, I wonder what you've been doing. And so, Paul wrote some things so that we would know what's really going on. So, now in 1 Corinthians 16, 9, please. <laughs> it says, For a great door and effectual is open unto me. So, from what we can tell, who opened the door? God, Jesus, right? Why? Why would they open a door? Been faithful. Faithful do what they've asked him to do, right? Paul. But then, as the doors open, what happens? According to the rest of the Bible verse. 
Many adversaries show up at the door. Why? Keep you out of the door. Because if you get through that door, then how many know that's increase for you? So the adversaries all show up at the door and start stirring up all this stuff. And that's why so often people that are faithful and committed, they stay with it. God opens the door. They start to an open door. And it's like all this stuff starts happening. Usually, the first temptation for us is to back up. And go back to familiar territory. And sometimes people are like, I don't know why all this is happening to me. Because you've been faithful. Because you've been showing up. You've been, I'm talking about your position that God's asked you to do. You've been faithful with God. You've been faithful to do what He's asked you to do. And I mean, no, God opens the door for you. You step through it. And right when you step through it, what also is at the open door according to the Scripture? Adversaries or many adversaries? Many adversaries. And God began to talk to me and He said, did you notice? He said, I know you're teaching that numeral, that word many, numeral wise. But He said, yeah, it'll apply to numeral. But He said, really though, what I'd like for you to talk about in the area of many is diversity. How many different directions this stuff starts coming? To keep you from the room that you're going through, that you're stepping into. But look at somebody say, I'm going through the open door. Now, let's go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, please. We'll go there. Ephesians 6, 2 Corinthians 1, we'll be done. 1 Corinthians 12, please. We'll, we'll move quickly here. 1 Corinthians 12, 1. You ready? All right, it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts. We know this. You've been taught this. The word gifts italicized wasn't in the original writing. They added it to help us. They italicized it not so that they wouldn't deceive us. The word spiritual means two of the definitions, not all, two. Things appointed to and of the Holy Ghost. Other one is things that pertain to the Spirit. For the word spiritual. Right? So Paul writes, now concerning, may I say it this way, things that pertain to the Spirit. Brethren, I would not have to be ignorant. Yeah, yeah, sure. Now what's ignorant? Not known. You don't know. What's stupid? Knowing and still doing it. Yeah. When you have information, you won't act on it. Look at somebody say, I'm glad I'm not sitting by somebody stupid. <laughs> Amen. Right? Aren't you glad? Now, you can be ignorant. That just means you don't know. But we're not stupid. Stupid is, information is given, and we still keep doing the same thing over and over. So, he says, concerning things of the Spirit, brethren, I would not have you misinformed, unknown. In the realm of the Spirit, there are four categories. You know these. There is the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Right? Yes, sir. Then there are demon or angelic assistants, angels of heaven. Then there are the devil and demons. Right? And then there are human spirits. There are four classes of spirits in the realm of the Spirit. He said, know how all four operate. Do not be ignorant about that. Know how God works. Know how the angels are to work with us. How many know we don't serve angels? We don't worship angels. Right? We worship God. Amen. Always in the Old Covenant, angels showed up, and a man bowed down, he'd say, stand upright. But if it's Jesus, they knelt, it was fine. Right? Then human spirits. Always know that, because I, I've noticed before, if somebody... Uh, is it becomes disgruntled and they start talking to another person, you can discern the spirit that was on another person coming through that person. These are things you must learn. Things of the spirit. Amen? But the part we're after today is this. Now concerning things that pertain to the spirit, brethren, I'd not have you ignorant. If you don't mind, tell somebody, I'm glad you're not ignorant. Amen. Now, do we know everything? No. No, we don't. But how I many know what we know we're walking in? All right, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Paul writes, says this. For we wrestle not, we're going to go here in one more and then we'll stop. For we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. 
How many of you have ever wanted to whoop somebody besides me? I have. Traffic or whatever, you know. And they pass you or run you off the road and then tell you they're number one. I'm like, you know, but, you know. And so, how many know you, it's unprofitable to fight people? I said it's unprofitable to fight people. But I mean, no, sometimes you'll connect trouble to a person, but I mean, no, the devil is really the one behind it. Paul wrote and said that. Right? So, in this, he said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Then if you would, go with me, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. As far as I know, this is our last opening. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, please. And let's look together at verse 8. So we have increased. Does God want you and I to increase? Absolutely. Though our beginning be small, our latter end shall what? Greatly increase. Job 8, 7, right? Better is the end of a thing than the beginning. We've started our walk with God, but how many know we're going to finish our walk with God? Amen. 2 Corinthians 1, 8. Paul writes this, and I find it very interesting that he writes it, because he writes it for the young men, I'm sure, around him, also for the church at Corinth, they would know. He writes a letter, and in this letter here that he writes to the Corinthians, how many of you know he explains something, why there is so much trouble and turmoil around him? Very often people think because there's trouble, there has to be tr- sin or trouble. How I many know you be in the perfect will of God and have all kinds of stuff going on? Okay? But how I many of you are glad you and I have authority over the devil? How I many of you are glad he's under our feet? Okay. So Paul writes and he says, For we would not, brethren... Have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia that we were pressed out of measure above strength insomuch that we despaired even our life. He wrote that to inform the church that there was so much trouble going on around him that they did not want anybody, especially the younger Christians, to not understand what was going on. He had been found faithful. God had opened a door for him. He stepped through the door. And as he stepped through the door, there were many adversaries. And he wants the Christians to know that in this Christian walk, The closer we get to Jesus' coming, I don't know what all the world's going to do. I just know what the Bible says. It's going to get darker. It's going to get weirder. But I may know we're going to get brighter. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. You know, like the children of Israel in the land of Goshen, we're going to have lights in our dwelling. We're going to have food at our place. We're going to be all right. Amen. I don't know what's going to happen all out there, but how many know? Whatever happens, they're going to see you got the love of God, the life of God, the victory of God. It's going to send them in. But as you've been found faithful and you walk with this, God will begin to open more doors for you. As God opens doors, can any man shut it? No. No. So in that, when God opens a door, what's going to happen according to what Paul wrote, 1 Corinthians 16, 9? Many adversaries. Many different directions. We're, we're starting a, a, another building project this year. And uh, have you ever noticed you make a commitment to tithe to the local church? You never tithe to traveling ministers. You tithe to your local church. And if they got a building project, vans, things like that, how many know, give your offerings here at the local church first. Can I hear a real good amen? amen? Support the local church. Yeah. Then us traveling ministers have some place to go. Amen. 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 You know, I've told people before, they said, well, we want to send you our tithe. I said, don't, because 
if you have somebody get sick or you need me to come visit, guess what? You call me, I ain't coming. Amen, I ain't. Your pastor's supposed to do that. Are you with me? So you support the local church. But you make a commitment to tithe. That could be an open door for you. Like pastor was told about a while ago, not forcing you. How many know your favorite cat ain't going to die if you don't tithe? Amen. Can I hear a real good amen? Amen. amen. Thank God. You know, not holding you up, you know, holding you. With, but anyway, but all of a sudden you say, I'm going to start tithing. I, I, I love this place. I love the pastors. I love what God's doing through this work. You make a commitment to start tithing. Guess what will happen? Usually, there'll be something financially that'll really begin to rock and reel. And what the devil wants you to do step back. Then the next time you say, okay, Lord, I, I want to tithe now. I, I, I'm at a place. You get ready to go through a door. What's at the open door? Many adversaries. Learn that so that when you get ready to go through these open doors, if stuff stops happening around you, just say, settle down in Jesus' name. Stop that in Jesus' name. And we're going through the door. And we're going to finish our course. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Glory to God forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us for the preaching of God's Word. We trust that your faith and your love for God is stronger than ever before. Chaz and Joni Stevenson have a New Testament vision of spreading the full gospel of Christ around the world helping unbelievers meet Jesus Christ and building strong Christians who can impact their world and are doing so by preaching the uncompromised Word of God with the power of the Holy Spirit. To join us in that vision, please consider an offering to help with media costs or an offering to simply show the value of the spiritual things you have received. You may give online, by mail, or by phoning in with a credit card. If you're in Houston, Texas and looking for a good home church, Pastors Chaz and Joni invite you to a spirit-filled life-changing service at Houston Faith Church, where we're certain you'll experience the love and goodness of God in a real and powerful way. To watch services via live streaming or for more information about God, Houston Faith Church, or Stevenson Ministries, please visit us on the web or download our Houston Faith phone app or catch our Houston Faith TV Roku channel.